Should I watch this video or not? Trust me, I have spent months before writing this script, researching and understanding the topic myself. Ever wondered why you keep making the same mistakes? Or why your perception of reality seems a bit off sometimes? Well, you're not alone, and it's not entirely your fault. Your brain, that magnificent organ that's kept our species alive for millennia, has a dirty little secret. It's a master of deception, and you're its primary target. In the next few minutes, we'll explore how these helped our ancestors survive, are now causing us to make irrational decisions, form unfounded opinions, and sometimes even believe in complete nonsense. But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. Understanding these biases is the first step to outsmarting them, and by the end of this video, you'll have the tools to start seeing the world more clearly. So, what's in store for you? Human psychology, backed by real studies and eye-opening examples. You'll learn about biases you never knew existed, and probably recognize a few that have been messing with your head for years. On the downside, you might feel a bit uncomfortable realizing how often your brain pulls a fast one on you. But on the bright side, you'll gain invaluable insights that can improve your decision-making, relationships, and overall understanding of the world. Now, let's kick things off with a quote from Nobel Prize-winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman. We're blind to our blindness. We have very little idea of how little we know. We're not designed to know how little we know. Intriguing, right? But what does it mean? Well, imagine you're at a party and you notice that most people are clustered around the snack table. Your brain might jump to the conclusion that the snacks must be amazing. But hold on a second. What if people are just standing there because it's the only place with enough room for a group or because it's closest to the exit? This, my friends, is a perfect example of the bandwagon effect, one of the many cognitive biases we'll explore today. But why do we have these biases in the first place? It all goes back to our caveman days. Our ancestors didn't have the luxury of carefully analyzing every situation they encountered. If they heard a rustle in the bushes, it was far safer to assume it was a predator and run, rather than stick around to gather more data. Those quick, instinctive reactions helped them survive and pass on their genes, including the tendency for these mental shortcuts. Fast forward to today, and we're still using these ancient mental tools in a world that's vastly more complex. It's like trying to perform brain surgery with a stone axe. Sure, it might get the job done, but it's probably not going to be pretty. This is the tendency to search for, interpret, and recall information in a way that confirms your pre-existing beliefs. It's like having a Facebook feed, but in your brain, you're mostly seeing stuff you already agree with. A study by Stanford University found that even when presented with factual, scientific evidence that contradicted their beliefs about controversial issues, people rarely change their minds. Instead, they double down on their original stance. Sound familiar? Ever notice how a single negative comment can ruin your day, even if you've received a dozen compliments? That's negativity bias in action. Our brains are wired to pay more attention to negative experiences than positive ones. Psychologist Roy Baumeister and his colleagues found that bad emotions, bad parents, and bad feedback have more impact than good ones. This bias once helped us stay alert to dangers, but in today's world, it can lead to unnecessary stress and pessimism. This is a cognitive bias where people with limited knowledge or expertise in a specific field overestimate their abilities. It's the reason why your uncle who watched a YouTube video about vaccines suddenly thinks he knows more than epidemiologists with decades of experience. A classic study by Dunning and Kruger found that participants who scored in the bottom quartile on tests of humor, grammar, and logic grossly overestimated their test performance and ability. This is our tendency to rely too heavily on the first piece of information we receive when making decisions. It's why savvy car salespeople always start with a high price. They're setting an anchor that will influence your perception of what's a good deal. In a famous study, Tversky and Kahneman asked participants to estimate the percentage of African countries in the United Nations. Before answering, participants watched a Wheel of Fortune spin. Those who saw the wheel land on 10 estimated 25% on average, while those who saw it land on 65 estimated 45% on average. The wheel, 
completely unrelated to the question, significantly influence their guesses. This bias leads us to overestimate the likelihood of events we can easily recall. It's why people often fear plane crashes more than car accidents, even though the latter are far more common. A study by Lichtenstein et al. found that people consistently overestimated the frequency of rare but dramatic causes of death, like tornadoes and floods, and underestimated more common but less sensational causes, like diabetes and stomach cancer. Ever finished a terrible movie just because you'd already watched half of it? That's the sunk cost fallacy at work. It's our tendency to continue investing in something because of our past investments, even when it no longer makes sense. Researchers found that this bias even affects rats. In a study by Swice et al., rats were trained to wait for food rewards. When they had invested more time waiting, they were more likely to continue waiting, even when it was no longer the optimal choice. Also known as the I knew it all along effect, this is our tendency to perceive past events as having been more predictable than they actually were. It's why everyone becomes an expert after the fact. A study by Fishhoff and Baith asked participants to estimate the likelihood of various outcomes of Nixon's trips to China and the USSR. After the trips, participants were asked to recall their original predictions. They consistently exaggerated their predictive abilities, claiming they knew it all along. This is our tendency to favor members of our own group over those in other groups. It's a major factor in prejudice and discrimination, but it can also show up in more subtle ways, like assuming people who share your hobbies are more trustworthy. In a classic study by Tajfel et al., participants were divided into groups based on trivial criteria, like preferring one abstract painter over another. Even with these meaningless distinctions, people still showed favoritism towards their in-group. This is our tendency to overestimate the likelihood of positive events and underestimate the likelihood of negative events. It's why we think we're less likely than others to get divorced, be in a car accident, or face health problems. A study by Sherrod et al. used fMRI to show that when people imagined positive future events, there was increased activity in the areas of the brain involved in emotion and memory. This suggests that our brains are actually wired for optimism. This bias shows how the way information is presented can influence our decisions. For example, people are more likely to opt for surgery if told it has an 80% survival rate rather than a 20% mortality rate, even though these are identical. A famous study by Tversky and Kahneman demonstrated this effect using a hypothetical epidemic scenario. When the same program was framed in terms of lives saved versus lives lost, Participants' preferences reversed, even though the outcomes were identical. Now, you might be thinking, great, my brain is broken. What can I do about it? Well, the good news is that awareness is half the battle. By understanding these biases, you're already one step ahead of the game. Here are some strategies to help you combat cognitive biases. Actively look for information that challenges your beliefs. It might be uncomfortable, but it's the best way to overcome confirmation bias. Think about your thinking. Ask yourself, why do I believe this? What evidence do I have? These can help overcome biases by forcing you to consider all aspects of a situation, not just the ones that immediately come to mind. Remember that it's okay not to have all the answers. Being comfortable with uncertainty can help you avoid jumping to conclusions based on limited information. Many biases occur because our brains take shortcuts. When making important decisions, slow down and give yourself time to process information more thoroughly. Instead of relying on vague impressions, try to use concrete data when making decisions. Whatever conclusion you're leaning towards, take a moment to seriously consider the opposite. What evidence supports the alternative view? Remember the Dunning-Kruger effect. The more confident you feel about your knowledge in an area, the more you should question it. When assessing your own abilities or the likelihood of success in a venture, try to think about how similar cases typically turn out, rather than focusing on the specifics of your situation. Make it a habit to question your beliefs and the basis for your opinions. Are they founded on solid evidence, or are they the result of biases? Remember, cognitive biases aren't all bad. They're part of what makes us human, and they can sometimes lead to faster, more efficient decision-making. The goal isn't to eliminate them entirely, which is impossible anyway, 
but to be aware of them and know when to slow down and engage in more deliberate thinking. As we wrap up, let's return to Daniel Kahneman, who said, The idea that what you don't see might be more important than what you do see is a real hard one to get used to. But that's exactly what we've been exploring in this video. The unseen forces that shape our thoughts and decisions. By understanding cognitive biases, you're pulling back the curtain on your own mind. You're gaining a superpower that can help you make better decisions, form more accurate beliefs, and see the world more clearly. It's not always comfortable, and it certainly isn't easy, but it's a journey worth taking. So the next time you find yourself absolutely certain about something, or making a decision that just feels right, take a moment to pause. Ask yourself if one of these sneaky biases might be at play. You might just catch your brain in the act of lying to you. And remember, in the immortal words of Mark Twain, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. So stay curious, stay skeptical, and keep questioning, especially yourself. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the quirks of the human mind. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, why not share it with a friend? After all, misery loves company. And now you know we're all a little bit miserable when it comes to our cognitive biases. Until next time, keep your mind open.